My name is Johan Blake, the current 100 meter world champion. Let's first talk about the, the world championships last year in Daegu and come off the time, come off the man and all the situations that were there. On that start line and the finish, uh, what went through your mind? Well, a lot was going through my mind. I'm knowing the fact that I have prepared myself well for, for this moment and I've reached a final, my first time at the World Championship at one of the highest level in the world. You know, um, a lot was going through my mind. You know, this is it. This is what I've been dreaming for. Um, this is what my mom was wanting. So everything has been flashing back. And I said, look, I can't let down this person right now. And also myself, you know, so pretty much of that was going through my mind. And at the time <clears> when <throat> all the thoughts you know, gathered together and the, the first call to the line, you know, on your marks, what then happens? What goes through your mind, your body? Well, there was, I know that there was a lot of adrenaline pumping through my, my body. It was this excitement and I was ready to go. I, I couldn't wait to just go when time it started. I said, on your mark, I said, in my mind, yes, this is it. It is final year. Is this is really me? I'm saying to myself and I say, okay, you got to get them. And then that guns go, the gun goes and they suddenly realise there's a false start. What was your emotions at that time? Well, well, I said to myself, wow, wow, why? Because knowing the fact that I'm young, my, me and Yusin have been training for so long, you know, and we finally get to meet at a rural stage, knowing the farm that I am and, and knowing what Yusin boy can do, you know, I was looking forward for this race with him. But when I see his first start, I was, I was devastated, knowing the fact that I was prepared for this moment. You know, I, I didn't know what to do. And I said, I said to myself, get a hold of yourself. Look, Johan, you can do this. You can do it for Jamaica, not because your partner is out. You can do it. And at that time, because uh, Hussein realized that he'd made the full start, as you were walking back to the blocks, did you make any eye contact with him? I tried to, but you, you know, um, he was all caught up in, in getting, trying to get over what had happened. But um, I didn't even want to go to him, but I said, no, you're in a final. What are you going to do? He's out. This is, not you. this is not you. You need to focus. That's what I'm saying to myself, knowing the fact that, um, yes, he's out, but I, look, you have to refocus yourself and just get back into the race, and that's what I did. Good. So now, We've gone back, we're standing behind the blocks. You call to the line again, you set, the gun goes. Talk me through that after the gun. Get back to the, uh, when I get back to the block, I said, I have to sit in the blocks. I know none of these guys out here can't beat me because I've run with them on the circuit. Even if I get stuck in the blocks, I can come back from behind and win this race. When the gun get off, and I said, I know I was behind a bit and I was running. I said, I can't stop going. When I, feel, when I reach a fast meter, and I said, this is your move now, Blake. When I met my move, I saw myself out there. I don't know how my hand lift up, but they get up in the air somehow. And I said, yes, the youngest world champion ever. Yes. This and, is and you really, as you were moving down the 100 meter stretch, was things like that going through your mind that you could be the youngest uh, 100 meter champion in the world? No, right, funny enough, you know, when um, that wasn't going to my mind, I was just running, and I was just running, and I, and I said, I can win, I'm going to win. I passed Kim Collins, because Kim Collins get away, and I said, I'm going to win. But things that wasn't, that wasn't going to my mind, even though I know I can win the race, but when I crossed the line, I said, okay, I'm the youngest world champion. Sure, and then once you've crossed the line, everything else that goes with it, the photographers, uh, the people in the stadium, the noise, what was your reaction to all of that? How did you, did you manage to take it all in? Well, I didn't manage to take everything in because I was just there living my dream. I was, I was also caught up in my own moment of glory, knowing the fact that how oh, hard I've worked, I've worked assiduously over, over the years. And for me, for it to finally come through, moving from out of the dark into a, a sudden light, for me, it was, it was overwhelming, overwhelming for me because it has been hard work. It has been really, really, really tough work. And at any moment in time after you've won that race, did your mind flick back to think, well, Hussein wasn't there, 
I have won, but I still want to prove myself against him. Did any of those emotions come to your head? Not about the beating you saying part, but um, yes, um, I would love for him to win the race, but um, you know, to win the goal, you have, um, to get the goal, you have to win. So um, I, I wasn't thinking about beating you saying, I was thinking about getting the gold medal. So um, not really. What kind of focuses you? What makes you want to stay where you are and do what you're doing? Well, definitely, I have a, I have a wonderful coach, Glenn Mills. I think he is a person, and also Jamaica. Um, I love it there. Um, you have really great friends. You have people motivated when you're training. When you reach certain part um, in training and you get tired, they come on. Everybody clap and say, "Come on, you can do it." I think that all of that enthusiasm go inside of you. You make you want to stay there. And also, we're getting more equipped with our coaching abilities and what the level of Jamaica can do when you stay back home. And as I said before, you have really good people there that can that can support you, and you have good competition in training. So you don't like have to go to the um, other countries to get trained. And well, it's really at a nice there also. But probably that's why we are back stay in Jamaica and just do what we do. Sure. And as we mentioned, uh, being a quite a young sprinter, the age of 21, winning the world championships. So you're not far out of being in high school. What was your progression like through high school and the support that you had to take you to where you are now? In high school, it's where it all began. High school, where I started out. Yes, um, from when I um, broke the national junior record as a youngster, I said, okay, I can do something great on the international scene. And I make a decision, leaving high school, going to races to coach Glen Mills, where it all propels, where, where it turned me into this beast. Um, for me, yeah, it take a while, yes, but I think um, it's time come at the right time. So um, I think it start from high school, then I moved to Coach Glenmills and he propelled me into this avatar that I am today. I mean, and, and you're, a rec you know, you're a relatively newcomer to the whole world circuit. And I've met you on a few occasions. You have, you have quite a kind of uh, a soft approach. Does that change when you're training and does that change when you're in competition? Definitely, definitely. When you're around me, you say, oh, this is shy, is this and that. But when I'm on the track, it's all business. That's where um, all, it, all the excitement takes place. And for me, when I'm on the track, I think about a lot of stuff. I think about poverty. I think about everything that is going through my mind. What can make my mom happy? What can make the world happy? Because I want the world to be a better place one day. So that's what I'm working for. And if I can help, starting by doing track and field and encourage other young kids, that's, that's where it all began for me. But when you're out here, I'm just a shy person. I hardly can talk. Sure. So tell me now, you've now got this world accolade and obviously there'll be a chance to defend your title and the man in the pole position at the moment with regards to the fastest man in the world, Hussein, how, how do you see him? Well, we train together, as I said. He's a nice guy with a great chemistry going on and he's working hard. Within Jamaica now, there, there's a fantastic crop of, of sprinters coming through. There's yourself, there's Hussein. And do you all work together like as a, as a, as a mob attitude to sort of take on the rest of the world? Is that how it goes in Jamaica? Well, in Jamaica, um, not really. You have competition, you have different clubs. You know, like me, you saying it will be in one club and Asafa and Nesta and those other guys will be in the next club. And yeah, we take over the world, but not like, we, work, we come together and say we are going to take over the world. We take over the world like me and you saying and say, okay, let's go here and show them what you got. We don't know what the other clubs have planned, like Asafa and those guys, because we're kind of a bit different and rivalry between clubs and stuff, but <laughs> not really. So the rivalry is definitely there. Yeah. So in a sense, what does it make it in sprinting? How fast do you think that yourself, Hussein, and the other sprinters around, well, how fast do you think people are going to be able to run? Well, for me, I think over the years, technology has gotten better. We have looked at our spikes, we have looked at our closing and different stuff that we wear. And definitely the coaching regime has been improving over the years significantly. It moved from like 50% to about 95%.
over the years, uh, not, uh, not also in the world, but in Jamaica specifically. And I think the coaches want us to go really fast and be light. And I think I just don't, I don't know my limit yet. Sure. So in your mind, what do you think makes a great sprinter? Well, what makes a great sprinter? Well, I would say the way you eat, the technique, the type of muscle system, the body, the, the build of your body. That's what my coach teach me. Because you know, some people have fast twitch, some people have slow twitch muscle. And I think it has to do with the fast twitch, the muscle build of the athlete, and how strong the athlete really is. And also nutrition is important. And can't forget the technique. I think that will make a perfect sprinter. And earlier on, you mentioned that away from track and field, you know, you think about how you can make the world uh, a better place and, and, and get on with people. And, but when you're on the track, you're, you turn into the sprint demon. What kind of message would you have for young athletes that are now coming through? Well, my message, I'm starting a foundation. It's the Why Be Afraid Foundation. So I think I would translate my message through my foundation, like showing the world I really want to help. And I want to show them I do it at age 21. I win the world championship. You're young, you're talented. You have somebody, you must have some talent where you can harness and work on. So I think it will be um, through my foundation, the Why Be Afraid, I'm going to send some positive message where they can uplift themselves. And I think it will really help. Uh, I think for a, a young man that uh, made the world stage, that's a very positive message that you're putting across. Now, would that foundation be uh, just based in Jamaica or is it, would it be an international foundation? Well, as, well, when we really look on the world and see uh, the crisis that, it, that it's had today, um, I think when time we work out most of the stuff in Jamaica, I think we can bring it worldwide because um, most of the time we went here when I went to Africa and I see all those those kids that come off the plane crying because of the life that they're living. And in track and field, I will devote all my money to that because um, I think they are the future also.